Inclined planes are a common situation in physics classes because they're a common situation in real life. Cars moving up hills, furniture going up the ramp of a moving truck, pushing a rock up a hill for eternity. Oh wait, that's mythology. But still, they're very, very common in real life. There's an incline on this plane. Speaking of hills, if a boulder is rolling down a hill, what force is causing it to do that? Welcome to Flip Physics. Today we're going to talk about inclined planes. Get it? The first step in solving any physics problem is to draw a diagram. That's the first thing you should always, always do. In this case, since we're talking about forces, we should probably draw a free body force diagram. So let's say a ball is rolling down a hill to constant speed. The forces acting on the ball would look something like this. We have the force of gravity acting straight down. We have the frictional force acting up the plane, although it could also be a situation with no friction. Sometimes a question will tell you that and we have the normal force acting at a right angle to the surface. Notice that there is no force acting down the plane, no force acting like this. The reason it rolls down the hill is because of gravity. So you could say that it's like gravity is acting partly down the slope, partly down the slope and partly into the slope. Think back to breaking things into components. It's a similar kind of situation, even though normally wouldn't break a force going that way into a component. The only way the force of gravity wouldn't pull it down the slope is if the gravity was acting at 90 degrees or more to the slope. Now the problem with dealing with a situation like this is that in the y direction and the x direction there are hardly any forces. Nearly every force we're looking at is acting at an angle. To analyse this situation the usual way we'd have to break down every single one of those forces into an x and y component. And that would be a lot of work. So instead we use a little trick. Wait for this. You ready? Whoa! Did you see that? Pretty exciting don't you think? We rotated the axes. Yes, you can do that. Don't let anyone in math class tell you otherwise. Axes are completely and totally made up. We can pick them to be wherever we want them to be. We rotate the axis to line up with the slope. Now all the forces except for gravity are either on the x-axis or the y-axis. So now all we have to do is break gravity into an x and y component. If the slope is at, say, 35 degrees, then this angle will be 65 degrees. If we draw a vector triangle and use Sokotoa, we'll find that the x component is fg cosine theta and the y component is fg sine theta. If you're not sure how that works at this point, you should watch one of these two videos. Or if you're one of my classroom students, just come and see me, that's probably easier. So now all our forces are acting in the x direction or the y direction. The one that wasn't has been split into two forces that are acting in the x direction or y direction. Since we said the ball is rolling at a constant speed, then the forces on it must be balanced. So we can do some balanced forces equations. In the x direction, fg cosine theta is equal to the force of friction acting up the slope. In the y direction, we have fg sine theta, that's the component of gravity that acts into the slope, is equal to the normal force acting out of the slope. So those would be our balanced forces equations. However, if a ball was just freely rolling down a hill, that's not really what would happen. What would happen is that it would accelerate because of gravity. So in that situation, a situation where the object is accelerating down the slope, we would have to use a Newton's second law equation. Even if it was accelerating down the slope, the forces in the y direction would still be balanced. It's not accelerating into the slope or out of the slope. If it was accelerating in the y direction, it would either fly off the slope or go through the ground, and that's clearly not going to happen. So in the y direction, we can still keep that balanced forces equation that we had before. But it's in the x direction where now we'd have to use a Newton's second law equation. So instead of that x direction balanced forces equation, now we're going to write a sum of the forces equals ma, or f net equals ma. We then have to replace our f with the forces that are actually acting in this situation. In this case, that's fg cosine theta minus ff the component of gravity acting down the slope minus the force of friction acting up the slope. And that's equal to m, the mass of the boulder, multiplied by the acceleration of the boulder. Then if we're given enough numbers, we can solve for a missing value and find whatever it's asking us to find. So there you have it. If you're dealing with a slope, just move the axes. I won't try that in math class though. They tend to get kind of grumpy about that stuff. I think it's like a one axis to rule them all kind of thing. Although to be fair, they are grumpy about a lot of things in math. One axis to rule them all, one axis to find them, one axis to bring them all, and in the darkness, find them. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. Please comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. If you like this video, you can press the like button, and you can also subscribe. Until next time, keep questioning. Hush, hush, back to look. Hush, hush, gimp battle. Hush, hush, the cat look up, bookshem, ishi, crimp battle.